Hey there, folks, and welcome back to another episode of Airgun Reporter. My name is Paul Capello, and for today's show, we're going to check out the Baikal MP61. This is a funky little spring piston powered rifle, comes to us from the makers of the IZH 46M and the Baikal Droz BB Repeater. Now, this rifle has become somewhat of a cult classic among the people who are fans of it, and for good reason. But the first thing we're going to do is check out some features, then we'll do our Basic testing, we'll do some crony testing, some target testing, and then we'll wrap up the show. I think it's going to be a good one. Stick around. All right, folks, let's go over the top-level features of the MP61. First and foremost, this rifle is a side lever. It takes about 12 pounds of energy to cock it each time. Now, that's pretty light, and that's great for young people or if you just want to shoot all day long and not get fatigued. Secondly, this rifle is available in 177 caliber only, and the best part, it's a repeater. That's right, it uses this small clip here, comes with two of them, and you load five pellets into here. Every time you cock it, loads another pellet in the barrel. Very cool. It also has a front globe sight, a rear adjustable sight. This is adjustable for windage and elevation. Although the windage adjustments, you need a small screwdriver to move that notch left or right. That's a little bit uh, quirky. I wish there was a small knob on there for adjustments. It also has an 11 millimeter rail on the back this is good for a diopter, and it's even good for a scope if you get the right scope rail and scope combination for it. Now, it also has an adjustable stock in the back. Move this small screw here, and you can adjust it probably about three or four inches. I've got it on the longest setting here. That gives you about a 14 and a half, 15 inch length of pull. Now, that's good for me. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some crony testing and see how fast this puppy goes. Now to load the clip on the Baikal MP61, it's very simple. Make sure your clip is situated properly for insertion into the breech. Then it's just a matter of taking your pellets, dropping them in head first. Now what's missing on these clips are those small ridges that hold the pellets securely in. And you'll find that on other multi-shot rifles and pistols. If you turn it over, you might lose a couple. See, I just lost one right there. In that case, when loading it, just tilt it forward, insert it into the breech, got a spring in there, push it all the way in, you're ready to go. All you have to do is cock it and shoot it. All right, folks, here's the results of our crony test using the H&N match rifle pellets. Those are an 8.18 grain wad cutter. Looks like our numbers are pretty good here. Even for a rifle that's been taken out of the box this morning, we have a low of 431 feet per second, a high of 444 feet per second, an average of 436. Our extreme spread was 13.25 feet per second and standard deviation of 3.74 feet per second. Now folks, in case you're wondering, with an average velocity of 436 feet per second, this rifle is meant for target shooting. It's not meant for hunting. Don't go ahead and use it for that. It just does not have the power. This is meant for casual plinking, shooting paper targets, and even for some you know, casual competition. Now the next thing we're gonna do is get some targets down range. Try it out with the open sights first, then I'm going to mount a scope on it and see how we do there. Like I said earlier, cocking the MP61 is very easy. Just press down on a small button on the end of the cocking arm, pull it back. Now when you push it forward, that bolt probe is going to load a pellet from our clip. It's that simple. Now the IZH MP61 does not have a safety. Once you bring that lever forward, you're ready to shoot. So make sure that your rifle is pointed in a safe direction before you even cock it. Well, okay folks, it looks like we didn't do too terribly bad with the H&N match rifle pellets. Now, I wasn't going for scoring here, but I was going for a decent group with those pellets. Now, it's not fantastic but it's not bad at all. The MP61 has a near legendary barrel. I know with practice you can get very, very tight groups with this rifle. Now next, we're gonna mount a scope on the MP61 
and see how we do again at 10 meters. Now as you saw when I was shooting, every time you cock the rifle, it advances the clip to the left, bring the lever back, the bolt probe inserts another pellet down the barrel. The bolt probe went forward when I closed the cocking lever arm, and the bolt probe pushed the pellet down the barrel. Now after you've taken your fifth shot, you simply can't remove the clip because the bolt probe is way down deep inside the barrel. In order to remove it, you have to come around the other side, push this lever forward, a spring brings that bolt probe back, and then you just press this small lever on the top here, and now you can remove your clip. Now folks, if you look closely at the 11 millimeter rail on the back of the MP61, you'll see that it's very, very short. That's because it's probably meant for a diopter sight, but there is a solution to putting a scope on this rifle, and that's to use the BKL 568 11 millimeter to Weaver adapter. This is what's known as a unitized mount. That means it's a single piece, and that also means you'll have to tighten each and every one of these screws to lock it down. Now, go ahead and get my Allen key here, lock it down. In case you're wondering, I've got a Leaper's Bug Buster scope on this. Seems to fit pretty well. If you look at the scale of the whole thing, heck, that just might turn out to be a pretty good combination right there. Okay, folks, like I said, make sure you tighten down each and every one of these screws or you're going to wind up with your scope rail creeping back every time you take a shot. Now, you don't have to tighten it too terribly much. Just make sure you get each one tightened just enough. All right, folks, now that we have the Leaper's Bug Buster Scope mounted on the MP61, using the BKL 568 11mm to Weaver adapter, I'm going to go ahead and shoot some targets downrange, sight this thing in, and of course we're going to keep our targets at 10 meters. I'm not going to push my luck today with this thing. Let me go ahead and retrieve that last target. All right, let's try for a five-shot group using the H&N match pellets. Okay, not too shabby with the H&N match rifle pellets. These are an 8.18 grain wad cutter. Okay, next I tried the Gamo match Diabolo pellets, and the results were not so great, as you can see here. Now the last pellet in our target roundup here were the RWS Meisterkugeln. That's a decent group. Well folks, out of the three pellets I tested, I'm going to have to go with the H&N match rifle pellets and the Meisterkugeln as a really good pellet for this rifle. Let's go ahead and test that trigger, then we'll test the sound and wrap up the show. Now folks, I don't want you to get confused when you buy this rifle, but this uh, MP61 has been put through several revisions and the information in the instruction manual may not be all that accurate. In fact, it does say that there are three trigger adjustment screws for the MP61. That's not the case on this revised version. The only screw that remains in this version of the rifle is the trigger over travel adjustment here. On previous versions, you were able to adjust the position of the trigger and also adjust the spring tension on the trigger. That's not the case with this. Just wanted to make that clear to you folks. All right, let's take our trigger gauge and see what the measurements are. Okay, another thing I have to tell you folks is do not dry fire this rifle. Although the power is relatively low, you will damage the spring and the seals and everything else if you dry fire this. So treat it as you would any other spring powered air gun and don't dry fire it. Let's go ahead and shoot five consecutive shots, measure the trigger, and see what our results are. <laughs> 